Welcome. In the last video, we talked about running individual apps. In this video, we'll cover running a series of apps in a pipeline known as a workflow on the DNA Nexus platform. As you can see, we're in the LCA project. In the last video, we took our reads from the LCA study and we mapped them to BWMM. In this video, what we'll be doing is creating a basic DNA seq workflow going from QC all the way to variant calling with Freebase. To create a new workflow, we simply click on the New Workflow button. This will take us to the Workflow Edit view. In the upper left, we can set the name of our workflow, which in this case, I'll call it DNA Seek. So now that we've named our workflow template, let's start adding steps. Steps are also known as stages on the DNA Nexus platform. When we add a step, we'll be prompted to add a tool. In this case, we said our workflow will start with some basic QC steps. We'll be performing our QC with FastQC. I search for it and I select it. Now, as in our previous video, the first time you select an app, you'll be prompted to accept the terms set by the app publisher. In this case, I'm not going to review the terms. I'm just going to agree and install. And I'm going to exit this view really quickly just to show you that FastQC has been added as a first step in our workflow. But we're not done yet. I'm going to add a couple more steps. I'm going to add FastQC again, but this time for the reverse reads. And then I'm going to add BWMM for our mapping step. And then we'll end with Freebase for our variant calling. And again, I'm given the prompt since this is the first time I'm running Freebase, I agree and install. All right, so now we've added all the steps to our workflow, and I'm going to close this window. And let's do a quick review. FastQC for the forward and reverse read into BWMM and closing out with Freebase. However, we're not done yet. One goal of the workflow is to have the inputs and outputs of one stage mapped to the inputs and outputs of the next stage. So for our workflow, we want the inputs for FastQC, our forward and reverse reads, to be the inputs for BWMM. We can achieve that by simply clicking, dragging, and dropping onto BWMM. And we do that again for the reverse reads. And now when this workflow is run, we will select the inputs for FastQC and those same inputs will automatically be set for BWMM. So now that we've set the inputs for BWMM, we want the output BAM file generated by BWMM to be the input BAM file for Freebase variant calling. Again, simply click, drag, and drop. So our workflow is complete now. However, I want to point out a couple nice features of the workflow editor. If I were to drag and drop, for example, reads to an invalid input, such as genome, it would flag me saying that the extension does not match. Now I'm going to remove this. So I want to point out that app developers can set expected extensions for each input and output to aid in the workflow development process. So that wraps it up for creating our workflow template Let's make sure this is saved, which it is, and let's go back to our project. All right, so now we've closed and saved our workflow template. However, we can still go back and edit our template if we miss anything. There are two options. You can either right-click on the workflow itself and select Edit, or you can select the workflow like we have now and select the Pencil Edit icon, and that will take you back to the workflow template. We're not going to change anything. We're going to go back and actually run our workflow. For running your workflow, you have three options. You can choose to click Start Analysis and then search for your workflow, in this case, DNA Seq. Or you can select the workflow, then select the Run icon. Or you can click the actual workflow. Now that we're running the workflow, we can set the actual inputs for each step in the workflow. So now I want to select the forward reads. I do that by, again, clicking. And now we're in our data selector view. You can see that it's already showing us all files that match the pattern specified by the app developer. We can toggle that on and off by simply clicking. We'll keep it on since we want FastQ files. And here I'll select the forward read. I do the same thing for the reverse read. And I want to point out really quickly that I don't need to set the forward and reverse read for BWMM because we've automatically mapped the input of FastQC to the input of BWMM. So we set up forward and reverse reads. However, you can see that our workflow still can't be run quite yet 
That's because all our required orange parameters have not been filled. So we're missing the BWA reference genome index and the genome for free base variant color. So now we'll set our BWA reference genome index. Again, in our current project, we don't have any reference genome index here. What we can do is go to a public project sponsored by DNA Nexus and select HG19. For popular reference genomes, we pre-index them using bioinformatics tools. So we simply select it. And then now we need to select the genome for our freebase. And again, we don't have a genome in this project. We go to the public project, select HG19, and we select HG19. Great, now all our inputs are set and we're ready to run the actual workflow. However, before we do that, I wanna talk a little bit about structuring the output for our workflow. Under workflow actions, we can set the output folder for the entire workflow, meaning each stage will output its contents into whatever folder we choose. So now we're in our LCA project and we're going to create a new folder and we'll call it DNA seq output. And currently it's an empty folder. We'll select it to be the output folder for our workflow. Optionally, if we want to organize the outputs, we can set subfolders for each individual step of the workflow. We can achieve that by setting the output folder for each stage. In this case, I want FastQC to output to FastQC. I save that, and I'll go and I'll set those options for each stage. Again, FastQC outputs to FastQC. For BWMM, we'll output to just a folder called BWA. Save that. And finally, we'll output our freebase variant calls to a folder called variants. And now we'll save that. So now our workflow is structured and ready to be run. So now we're gonna run our workflow. You can see that it takes us to the monitoring tab in our project, and we can view our workflow currently in progress. So that's it for building and running a workflow. In the next video, we'll talk about monitoring the job that we just started.